Hi everyone, Dr. J here, and in this video we're going to walk through an example in the CARES book about decision trees. Decision trees are one way of approaching a decision that has to be made in a way that can be quantified uh, by looking at different branches of this, this tree. And so what we're going to do is just walk through this example and talk about it as we go along. So to start out, our decision tree has the decision that needs to be made. And I'll represent this by a square. So our decision is whether to clean or not to clean. And this is the example that uh, Dr. Kares has in the textbook, which is looking at a, a particular uh, source of pollution that's a point source, it has a single location, and we're looking at whether or not uh, some wells or a well nearby will be polluted and contaminated by that source of pollution. So it hasn't happened yet, the well has not yet been contaminated. And so the question is, should the local government initiate a cleanup of that contamination or not? In other words, what is the cost associated with cleaning up versus the cost that's going to be associated with taking care of any potential lawsuits that happen uh, as a result of the well getting contaminated? Okay, so here's our decision. Our decision is represented by this square. And we have our two options, clean or do not clean. And now for each one of those options, we have different possibilities. So if we clean, then presumably, if we've done a good job cleaning, there's no chance of having a lawsuit from uh, the cleanup. And so under this clean branch, we're going to have uh, a payoff right away. And that payoff is going to equal the cost of cleaning up, which is, in our example here, $15 million. Sounds like a lot of money to do a good job cleaning up. Uh, but the question is, how much money is it going to cost if the city gets sued for not cleaning up? And in, that, in our uh, example case here, the number for that is $50 million. So if there is a lawsuit, we'll have a $50 million cleanup plus lawsuit and all the costs associated with that. If we just go ahead and clean up directly, it's $15 million. And so you might say, well, obviously cleaning up is a better choice because that's only 15, whereas if you have this lawsuit, it's going to be $50 million. But there's uncertainty here. We don't know that there's going to be a lawsuit because we don't know the geology well enough to know whether or not that well will end up getting contaminated. See what I'm saying? So we don't actually know whether or not the well the drinking water well will end up getting contaminated, maybe it'll be fine. Maybe the geology around that source of pollution is restricted enough, it's keeping those pollutants in, in check, and it's not going to reach the drinking water. So what is the probability of that happening? Well, we have a, a circle here now, and I'll use green. So there's some uncertainty here. And the uncertainty is whether or not the geology of the area will allow the pollutants to reach the drinking water well. So we could draw the decision, or I should say the uncertainty part, like that. So in one case, the well is contaminated. In the other case, the well is not contaminated. But that's a little bit too simplistic, because there's actually several different factors which all come into play whether or not that well will get contaminated. And in our particular example, there's about three different factors. So this logic tree branch becomes a little bit more complicated. One question is, do we have sandbars or do we have sand channels in the uh, geology? All right, so sandbars or sand channels. And based on the uh, expert opinion, we ass assign a 50% probability to each one of these. So both of these outcomes, or both of these uh, re true geology, the true geology is unknown, right? And so we're assigning a probability of 50% to whether or not it's channels or bars. Now within that, there's some uncertainty about the orientation of these channels and bars. And we're sort of thinking uh, in our particular context that most structures are trending either northwest or northeast. So we're just going to say in both those cases, northeast, northwest, northeast and northwest. So we've got two different orientations of the geologic structures and one of those structures is primarily uh, in the direction between the contaminant source and the groundwater well. 
the other direction would be cutting across those, and so perhaps it's less likely that contaminants will get transported in that direction. And so for these cases, we've got uh, 40% and 60%. So 40% probability here, 60% probability here, and the same thing here, of course. I'll put that here. Now, and this is also, I should have said, this is also a circle. We have our circles in these cases. These are uncertainties that we have our circles here. These are, our, these are representing uncertainties that we don't know about the problem. Now, you might be asking a question at this point. Where are we getting these numbers, this 40-60, this 50-50 here? So we're saying 50% probability of a uh, sand bar versus a sand channel, and we're saying 40% probability that they are oriented northwest, 60% that they're oriented northeast. Where are those numbers coming from? So, and this is what we're going to talk about in the rest of the semester, is how do you generate uncertainty models for geological structures? So this is actually would involve some modeling. So you'd have to do some modeling, run some simulations. Perhaps in this case it would be flow simulations using the hydrology, using different uh, types of uh, geologic structures and materials, and then you would come up with these probabilities that way. So we'll talk more about that as we go along in the semester. For now, just assume that we've ran some models and we've come up with these numbers. Um, and then finally, there's one additional source of uncertainty, which is whether or not these sandbars or sand channels are connected with each other enough to provide a pathway from the source of pollutants to, this, to the uh, drinking water well. And now we have either connected or not connected, so I'll just use C for connected and NC for not connected. And the probabilities of these are not all the same. So depending on the geologic structure and the orientation, it's more or less likely that we'll have connected permeable pathways for contaminants to get from the source of pollution to the drinking water well. And let's see, what do we have here? Well, we have something like, I'm just going to simplify these numbers a bit. So obviously, uh, you can see that certain scenarios are more likely to provide a connection and certain scenarios are more likely to not provide a connection. So for example, there's a 90% chance of being connected if we have northwest trending channels. So evidently the direction between the pollution and the drinking water well is in the north is trending northwest. Similarly, if we have a northwest trending sandbar, there's a 98% chance that we won't be connected. And so now all these different numbers are kind of floating around here and the question is, well, how do we reduce these to something which we can use? So obviously we need our final outcome and let me use my so I'll use my red marker here for the outcome. And I'm just going to draw the little arrow there. Uh, let's see. So here we have, again in each case, if the system is connected between the pollution and the drinking water well, we'll have a $50 million lawsuit. That's what we're assuming. And then um, if it's not connected, we won't have anything, so there will, the cost will be zero. All right, so now you're starting to see a little bit more complexity in the problem. So we had our initial decision, do we clean up or not? And now we have fleshed out the options a bit. So now it's not just if we clean up, we'll pay 15 million. If we don't clean up, we'll probably pay 50 million because probably the pollution will spread to the drinking water well or maybe it won't and then we'll be safe. We're eliminating that uh, kind of ad hoc reasoning by quantifying the probabilities using some type of modeling. We have our, our estimated cost of the lawsuit and then for each one of these probabilities now, we can work a particular, we can follow a particular path which will lead us to a particular outcome. And now what do we want to do? We want to, in uh, what Dr. Kerr's in the book calls solve the decision tree, which is making a decision based on the best possible outcome. And how do we do that? Well, it goes back to expected value. So we've been talking about expected value all semester long. And here we want to calculate the expected payout given all of the possible options and the probabilities of those options. So we have probabilities associated with each one of our uncertain scenarios. And for each one of those scenarios, we can calculate what the cost is, what the um, payout would be. And then we can calculate, based on these probabilities, what's the expected payout of the entire tree, either do not clean, we can calculate the expected payout of that, or clean, we already know the expected payout of that, it's $15 million. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and do this and work this out. And this is a, again a case where we start from the start from the the this end of the decision tree, the leafy end, I guess, and work our way back in order to work out what the probability is or what the expected value is of the payout based on what we have. Now remember back to what we talked about from expected value. Expected value is the, is the sum over all values times the probabilities of those values. Let me write that down. Okay, so we have our definition of expected value. The expected value of x is the sum over all values of x times the probabilities of those values. So you take x times the probability of x, sum over all those values of x, and that's the expected value of x. Now in this case, we have this decision tree, but let's walk through how you do this. All right, so we'll start from this end, and for each one of these cases, we're going to take the probabilities of an outcome, we'll multiply that by the cost of that outcome, or the total payout. So in this case, we have a 98% chance of zero payout, 2% chance of $50 million payout. We'll multiply these two numbers. So remember, it's the value of x times the probability of x. So the value here is 50 million, times the probability of that value is 2%. Okay, so 2%, I'll work it over here on the left-hand side of the board. Negative 50 times 2%. And in this case, the payout is 0. So we just say 0 times 98%. So we have now, for this node, uh, we have our expected payout. It's negative 50, well, $50 million in cost, times 0 0.02, 2% 2 probability, plus, I don't have it written down here, but it's plus... Uh, 0 times 98% probability. So because 0 times anything is just 0, there's no extra cost that comes in here from the 0 cost outcome. And so we just take 0 0.02 times negative 50. The estimated cost, again, for this node is $1 million. Alright, so now let's continue on with the rest of the nodes. And we'll erase this last uh, set of branches on the tree. We'll replace the choices here with the expected value of that node. All right, so now for each one of my nodes um, here, so sandbars, northeast or northwest, channels, northeast or northwest, I've worked out the probability, or excuse me, the expected payout for each one of these nodes. And I've got them written down here in red. So the bottom line is 1 million, 20 million, 25 million, and 45 million. So getting the expected payout is increasing as we go up. That's just the way it worked out in this example. And now we do the same thing again, where now we take this payout, multiply by this probability here, this 60%, sorry, we're getting a little hard to see, um, negative 20 times 40% uh, probability of that particular payout, and we'll back it up another branch. So let me do that now. Okay, so now we've backed up a, a set of nodes, and now for each of the sand bars versus sand channels nodes, we've worked out the expected payout. So if we've got sand bars, we have an expected payout of negative 8.6, well, the, the payout is 8.6 million in cost. If we have channels, we have an expected payout of $33 million. Now, obviously, as we've said, the lawsuit, if it happens, costs 50 million. So we won't actually pay out 8 million or 33 million. This is, on average, what you would expect to pay out. Um, this is the expected value of what you would expect to pay out taking into account all the possible options. So you'll either pay zero or you'll pay 50, but what these numbers are telling you is, given these particular outcomes, how likely is it that you're going to pay 50 million versus zero million? And so basically, your expected payout here is 33 million. It's much more likely, if you have sand channels, that you'll pay out uh, than it is if you have sand bars. So in this case, you might decide at this point, we need to figure out if we have sand channels or bars before we make any decision, if we can do that cheaply. So let's go ahead and do the final uh, backup step, where we calculate the expected uh, payout for the do not clean up node. All right, so there we have it. Our expected payout, if we do not clean up, is $20.8 million, based on the information that we've put in. So under these conditions, with those probabilities that we had 
with the expected payout of a lawsuit of $50 million, or maybe multiple lawsuits of $50 million, we would definitely want to clean up. And that's because the expected payout from cleaning up is only $15 million. But the expected payout from not cleaning up is more than $20 million. And that means that if we don't clean up, the chances are pretty good that we'll have to pay more than we, um, than we pay, would have paid to clean up. So in this case, we make the decision, we're going to go ahead and clean up the system. 